Hi, this is Ismar of the Ukrainian Black and Death Doom Metal band called 1914, and you are listening to the Blatchet with a Vampire on the Metal Messiah Radio International. Tonight we want to welcome Captain John B. Kumar, K Company 307 Infantry Regiment. Dietmar, thank you very much for accepting this interview, and I want to welcome you to the Metal Blotchet with a Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Hello, man. Gruesome tales of World War One told via Black and Dead Doom Metal songs 1914. The Ukrainian band was formed in 2014, the year that marked the 100 years of the start of the First World War. Their songs are created an intensive atmosphere that creates dramatic images of war in the mind. Dietmar, how was the band form and how come you decided to write the gruesome tales of World War I? Oh, actually, I will die with this question. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> okay, some around 15 years ago, I became a war archaeologist. Let's call it like this. Start digging all these dead soldiers, remnants, some armors, shells. I'm starting deactivating all this stuff, collecting the military items, belt buckets, helmets, grenades, bombs, (laughs) 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 shells, some iron stuff. And actually, I started buried these dead soldiers, which we found the Carpathian Mountains or Berlin Forest everywhere on the battlefield, because here in Ukraine, it was a mount of huge battles of the First World War. And here is a lot of battlefields. So uh, I became with war archaeology. And I'm trying to collaborate because all this year, since 1997, I start as a punk rock singer. So I'm making my first hardcore punk band and I'm playing the music so and I'm trying to collaborate and try to mix it my passion actually with war archaeology with the music which I love first my try was mixing the great war thematic with the hardcore on the hardcore geek no one gives a fuck and no one understand about it Didmar, if you don't mind please present us the band current lineup I'm talking about 1914 yes yes we have two guitar players one his name Oleksii second one one named Vitali. Uh, we got a bass player, his name Armen, and our drum player called Rostik, Rostislav. It's a little bit difficult Slavonic names, but <laughs> okay. uh, his name Rostislav. So, and I'm uh, Dimitri, a vocalist. Okay, uh, great. Dietmar, thank you for presenting the band current lineup. After a couple of great releases, singles in 2014 and 2015, the band's debut full-length album is Tautology of War was mm. released December 17, 2015 via Archaic Sound, a fantastic debut of the blackened that doom sludge war machine from Lviv, Ukraine, dedicated to World War One, and mm. coming with fresh and powerful sound in the vein of Hail of Bullets, Aspix, and Bow Thrower, with strong material, atmospheric. Some of the great songs on this album that uh, we all have enjoyed so much, I can say Frozen in Trenches, mm-hmm. Vandom, Caught into the Crossfire, Zeppelin Raids, to mention some. The album covers the whole theater of fighting the Great War, the Battle of Gallipoli, and uh, the involvement of Atraturk, Brusi Lovisky, Break a True, the Battle of Verdun, Gas Attack at Ypres, Italian Troops, RTD, Christmas Truce, and the bombing of London and German Zeppelins. Please explain us about this album and how was this received worldwide? Dietmir, please. It was our first album. Actually, we try writing and our potential on this album, and I prepare a lot of interesting stories and interesting songs about life events, like Attack on Gallipoli Coast, the Dardanelle Operation, like song called called Frozen in Trenches. It's about Christmas Eve in the trenches, Christmas truce. So Brusilov Offensive, actually one of the biggest and bloodiest battle of the war, the Great War. It took place here in Ukraine. So with this album, we start as independent DIY metal band. And we got a huge fan base. We started touring a lot, playing gigs, playing a lot of gigs in Europe. 
And after this one album, we prepare a split between us and brilliant and awesome. I'm a huge fan of this band, Milan Werfer. We're going to talk about it right away. Okay, Didmir, how did you get to work with this great Ukrainian record label, Archaic Sound? The guy from Archaic Sound just visited a few of our gigs. And after that, he wrote a letter to me. So, hello, I saw you and you're fucking awesome. Maybe let's have some collaboration. Maybe I can release the album. And I said, okay, sure. It sounds good for me. <laughs> that was very easy. Yeah, yeah. Sound like this. And actually, this guy released an our second album too. Okay, okay. Please don't reveal too much too early. Okay. <laughs> Continue, the band went over to release one split with the band uh, Men and Welfare, mm -hmm. followed by a compilation and an EP in the same year, in 2016, and the band's second full-length album, The Blind Leading the Blind, which was released November 11, 2018 via, again, archaic sound for the fallen ones, because those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. I must say, a very great album. I love it so much. Outstanding songs on this record, I need to say, like Arrival of Musée. Nazar Gone. Musée are gone. Uh, something like this. Let, let it be like this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, A7V, Mephisto, Highwood, 75, Acres of Hell, and Passion Hell, yes, and uh, the Thunder Days of Offense, to name just a few. How was the deal with the label been for the band's second work and the release with the label Didmir? Oh. <laughs> so, before we start with the second album, I spent over one month in France, actually in France, in Belgium, I'm just visiting a lot of places, historical places, a lot of battlefields. I spent a few nights near the Verden. I just slept in a huge shell hole in the forest. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this place and I'm thinking about this life events and I'm asking myself for what and why they died and why one million people kill each other. I don't understand it. I didn't get it, but I got a lot of emotion, a lot of vibes, and I went back to Ukraine and record all my lyrics for the second one album, The Blind Leading the Blind. And yes, we release it with Archaic Sound 2 as our third release on Archaic because our split with Mid and Verfer was there too. So, and with this album, we got a huge, actually huge promotion, a lot of reviews, a lot of positive feedbacks, blah, blah, blah. A lot of magazines write about us, even Decibel Zine and actually huge magazines wrote about it. So, and we got a huge fan base with this album and start touring over the Europe actually a lot. Okay, okay. Tell us about the collaboration done with Dave Ingram of Benediction, ex Bull Tour, ex Before the Down and ex Hail of Bullets for the mm -hmm. song Passion Hell. As you know, he's the British one. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so, and I'm a huge fan of Bull Trover and actually Benediction. And I just want to collaborate with him. So when we prepare this song, I just think mm -hmm. in this song with a gruesome and some death metal vibes, I want to hear this, you know, voices with a huge balls. <laughs> so <laughs> when I think about huge balls, <laughs> when I think about <laughs> fucking brilliant and fucking awesome death metal voices, I am understanding, okay, it must be David Ingram. So let's write a letter. And I wrote a letter and he said, yes, sounds good. Sounds awesome. Let's try it. And we make this song Passion Hell. It's a good one. Yes. But tell us, I mean, even though you was mentioned something before, but how was all shows, tour, festivals, presentation been in supporting of this great album, The Blind Leading The Blind? Oh, <laughs> actually, it was hard. It's a little bit difficult because we are from Ukraine. If you know, we got a fucking shitty border and we must cross this border every time when we leave our country. And it's a little bit complicated for us because we travel in with even my Mosin Nagan rifle, you know, and if you are crossing the border with the European Union and you get a rifle in your <laughs> van, so it's a little bit weird and you can even go to jail. So we always just hide in my Mosin Nagan, <laughs> my rifle, we just hide in 
deep and <laughs> deep in our van and we crossing this fucking border and after that we traveling a lot so how our gigs looks like i wearing my uniform and every guy wearing the uniform i cover it with the mud on my face my hands but not just mud because i found the mud <laughs> i'm not a pig <laughs> not, not like this so i have a some ritual in every country and in every city where we playing i'm got a small piece of their mud of their some sand or something like this and add some local water so i need a local mud i need a local water i need a local fire and i all the collaborate and mix it in my old helmet from the first world war old french helmet and adding to this mix I'm always traveling with a gunpowder, which I dig in by myself in Carpathian Mountains from First World War. And I'm always adding a small piece of gunpowder in this firing and boiling mud. And after this, I cover it with this mud, with this local mud, with a fire, with a gunpowder from First World War, with a local water and with a local soil. I cover it all my face, all my hands. And I'm trying to explain war is a hell, war is a mud. War is about death. So you standing near me and you can uh, cover it with a, with this war mat too. So don't even try. Don't try covering with a war mat. So never again. Some kind of anti-war message. Even my mat. Okay, very good message. But uh, how was the show's festivals gone? I mean, they're talking about since 2018 to before COVID started for the band? Oh, it was really difficult and really hard, but not actually was. It's still. <laughs> so <laughs> we are still with COVID and, and we're still with some new mutation, with some Delta, Lambda and blah, 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 Epsilon. <laughs> There's a lot of, in uh, Greek of alphabets, <laughs> a lot of stuff we can took from there. So we playing a lot across the Europe. Year before the COVID, we finished with the huge festivals like in Hoven Metal, meetings like Pit Festival in Netherlands. A lot of these two years we just spent like, you know, in some anabios maybe. <laughs> I don't know how to call it. We just sitting there in Ukraine and we do not know how to live, went back to normal life, how to start to play the gigs again. It's a little bit hard and difficult, but everyone lives with this. We are not some uh, <laughs> special guys. Everyone with this shit. Yeah, everyone with this COVID situation and things. But Tell me, you guys play at Eindhoven Metal Meeting that was back in 2019? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I missed you for a year because I was there 2018. Uh-huh. Okay. We playing actually before the COVID starts. So it was awesome. It was huge. It was massive. So one of the greatest show we ever played with a fucking brilliant bands like Paradise Lost, Candle Mass, with M.O.D. I'm a fucking huge fan of M.O.D., Billy Milano. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, we, and we playing together with this Matt's granddad. <laughs> Let's call him like this, Matt granddad. I will return this year, 2021, so I'm very excited to go back to Eindhoven Metal Meeting. It's going to be a great festival again. Yeah, they always making a great and a perfect show. Interesting festival, really. Okay, to continue, to continue, I have a lot of questions. Ukrainian World War One expert 1914 continue to reflect the gruesome tales of the World War One. It's soldier fate, their death fear and fits to be never forgotten and unleash their new opus where fear and weapons meet out October 22nd, 2021 via Napalm Records. I'd like to give a shout out to Natalie Camilo from Napalm Records. Yes, please explain us how was this marriage between the band and this Austrian prestige label, Maple Record, occurred. When we released the previous album, The Blind Leading the Blind, actually, as I told you, it got a huge and a lot of positive reviews, a lot of feedbacks. So we got a few really interesting proposals from a different European and not actually European, worldwide labels. And we just sitting like, whoa, our music interesting for the major labels. Okay, <laughs> it's a <laughs> fucking awesome news for us. <laughs> we even didn't think in this way, but we got a few proposals. But Napalm Records was 
one of the best. They were fast as hell. If I got a question, I received an answer just in one minute. But the other label needs three days, even a week, to explain us something. Actually, Napalm Records prepared for us, in my opinion, a fucking brilliant platform and condition for a huge start. This new album, the first album, because Napalm Records re-released The Blind Leading the Blind, but this one, Where Fears and Weapon Meet, it's our first album on the major label totally on the napalm records and i really love our ways of collaboration with napalm records they do not try nothing to change explain us no play like this or wrote songs like in this way no 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 they tell us man actually you're a musician your idea is great so prepare for us something interesting <laughs> awesome. for me it's awesome because i was a little scared you know all my life i was in a diy movement like a hardcore band like a punk rock singer and here's i am assigned with a huge major label and i just a little bit nervous and scared oh maybe they wanna correct our music or do something with the lyrics or with the thematics no no they totally support us we got 100 no not even 100 200 percent of support so <laughs> okay but i mean yes the COVID has come but at least you guys was very busy i mean writing you was preparing this great album for us and so i mean these two years 2021 it was very productive for 1914 i'm very very glad that you guys could have done it and to give us this great and outstanding album actually <laughs> <laughs> last year as i told you we spent in some dragon sleep we do not understand nothing what's wrong with the world today how we must react as a band either any shows a future or we can just close like a project oh, we do not understand nothing no one uh, the world is going mad so <laughs> we spent last year just in some anabios and we start with the new album in the late november of 2020 oh okay so all this album we prepare just in the three months i can't believe it wow uh, that's a record we prepared in the three months of intensive of aggressive work i call it aggressive because i'm a little bit chaotic guy and i'm always shouting and i'm, I'm always screaming come on let's do it i need it i have a, an idea let's make in those riffs let's make in those blast beats come on guys blah, blah, blah. so and everyone hates me <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking but it was really intensive and hard work and we making all this album just in the three months and in 2021 we in april we finished all songs we playing it a lot on our rehearsal and after that in late of april we goes to studio and recording this album in two weeks okay leave it up to there please okay. <laughs> <laughs> massive first single and across now marks is Place already marks an absolute highlight as the stamping outburst featured none other than Paradise Lost Nick Holmes. Please tell us more about this massive new album, first promotional single, and the collaboration done with Paradise Lost and Bloodbath on Nick Holmes. Okay, so lyrics of the song, it's a real letter. It's not my uh, some uh, dreaming or fantasy, it's a real letter I found in War Art and it's about the mother received the letter how her son died even when you read it it hurts but i even can't imagine those mother's emotion you know she received this letter and in this letter your son died by shelling so one shell came and just falling down on your son you know what's remained after the human <laughs> when the shell falling down nothing just a big shell hole and a small small piece of meat that's all and she received this letter we even can find him and buried him so sorry about it he still in the soldier's grave where he fell but our empire and the king and the crown deeply sympathize you with your lost so blah 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 and a typical empire propaganda when i read this letter I just imagine in my head all this all this story and I'm st 
starting just singing this, you know, you reading this, I regret very much to inform you this letter, you read. And immediately in my head, it's collaborate with some music and, and I'm making like a song. And when I explain it to the whole band, I prepare this letter at the song. So let's do it. But I need a clean vocal on chorus. My clean voice is not actually <laughs> good. I'm a punk rock singer. So if you need a, some bad religion vibe, I can provide it. <laughs> But <laughs> not some doom uh, stuff with the clean voices. So and we start to thinking, okay, who, who can provide for us a huge and massive harsh and growl and clean voices and immediately because i'm a huge fan of paradise lost i grew up on their music and i'm collect all the tapes cds vinyls actually i'm a huge fan since 1995 it's uh, a lot of time so and i'm told to my guys maybe let's try to wrote a letter to nick holmes what do you think And they told me, ah, come on, it's impossible. No, 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 no. forget about it. It's impossible. Nick Hobbs from Paradise Lost. <laughs> it's your, <laughs> it's your uh, erotic fantasy. No, uh, forget about it. But I try and I wrote a letter and I showed the lyrics and explained the idea, explained the thematics. And in the three days, we receive a letter. Okay, interesting stuff. Send me a demo. Wow, it was like, you know, <laughs> Nick Holmes, write me a letter and he uh, like my idea. Wow. Just in, really rapidly, in one day, we recorded a demo and I sent it to Nick Holmes. And again, in the three days, we received a new one letter. Oh, I like it. The song. Okay, guys, I'm in. Fuck, it was like a thunder, you know. I'm sitting in my notebook and I... What? 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 <laughs> Nick Holmes <laughs> accepted it. Come on. It's impossible. I'm um, even now, so I can't believe in it. You know, I grew up on their music and I'm a huge fan. And you know what it means when you grow up on the man uh, with the high regard. Uh, oh, I even <laughs> I get a yep. lot of emotion yep. right now and I cannot explain even clearly. I, I love Paradise Lost as well. I love all his albums. I've seen them so many times on the road and I mm. always join their shows live yeah so <laughs> for us it was wow it's really it's really impressive and uh, actually i really appreciate this collaboration actually okay but um, didmar to go farther uh, just a couple of weeks ago you have released another single pillars of fire please explain oh <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of questions You know, <laughs> okay, uh, this song about the Battle of Mezines in Belgium and near border of France. So uh, this song about live event when British soldier and Anzac Corps from Australia dug an enormous holes under the enormous tunnels under the Germany position. And they pack it as hell with the explosions and some ammonals and uh, a lot of explosive stuff. And And just in one second, when they just blow up it, more than 10,000 Germans died. You know, just in one second, you clip your eye and 10,000 of young men, of human beings, just poof, disappear. And it's fucking brutal and it's fucking, you know, it's, it's a madness. It's a totally bloodshed. So this song about it about this event and it hits me hard with my emotion with uh, it's really Heart. And I visited two years ago, I visited uh, this place, Mezino Ridge, and I check all these craters, they still there. And it's really expressive and I can call it interesting. <laughs> it's a fucking brutal way of human behavior. Let's call it like this. But I see you also feature with Sasha Bowl. Do you want to say about uh, this collaboration with Sasha? Okay, Sasha, a good friend of mine. He's from Western Ukraine too, as 1914. I really love his music. He's the Ukrainian dark country singer. You know, this genre grew up and raised in the United States. But here in Ukraine, we have a few interesting uh, dark country, South and Gothic even called like this bands. And Sasha Bull, one of greatest artists. 
And when I wrote this song cover, I understand, okay, this song's not neither about black metal nor about blast beats. It's not about some huge riffs or something else in this way. No, it's typical soldier songs. You know, you're sitting in the trenches near the small fire and quietly sing this song with a small instrument, which soldier can have in the trench, actually some like harp, banjo, some small percussion something like this and i making a small demo with my acoustic guitar as an idea sent to sasha so sasha what do you think about it and he think yes i i love it i totally understand the vibe and the way so and he sent the first actually not not even third or some like first demo he sent to us hey guys what do you think about it and i'm fucking got a goosebumps you know <laughs> like my head because he totally got this vibes mood and this way of this song you know after the first demo i said yes man let it be like this i don't need a professional recording i don't need to leave it like this it must be a real trench song okay don't change it don't change it yeah don't change it i'm totally satisfied with it Dietmar, i see that you guys Yeah, have been writing in different language. Any reason for doing so? You know, great war is about all states, all countries, all nations, all languages. So we trying to communicate on a different language. Some German and Austrian parts, some French parts, some British parts, Ukrainian parts, because we wrote a few songs about Ukrainian heroes, even about one song we have on the first album about Russian Uh, sides actually on the new album we have uh, one song about american soldier called hell fighters it was the uh, first american black division so afro-american guys you know from brooklyn from harlem from ghetto they traveling from united states to the france and reacting as actually and they was brave and they a real hero and this song our honor to all those afro-american soldiers we try and making a song about every side not actually about just the main like france british and germany part no called gr the great war the great because the war between all nations so uh in the future we will try to make a song about indian troops about african troops even about chinese troops because a lot of nations were involved in this madness where fear and weapon meet will be available in different formats please for the audience what are all these formats they can buy this great new album well we actually mastering and mixing this album in really brilliant studio in sweden we making few difference it's normal right now because it's okay to making a different mixing for a different format so we got a one mix for a vinyl release we got a second one mix for for the streaming release we got a third mix for the cd and we got a Uh, one yet a uh, plus for the tapes so and all this release will be with the different mixes i hope and guys who love music and who have a normal player and other stuff you know this vinyl stuff and uh, cd players will heard it will understand this difference in between this formats and mixing this difference i see you have different colors also available in vinyl okay the blind leading the blind 2018 album was recorded at Moose Production in Ukraine, a mix at Nail Village in Sweden. How was this time for the recording mixing master for Where Fear and Weapon Meet gone? Actually, you know, it's all about money. If you got a lot of money, <laughs> you can have brilliant studio and also mixing and mastering. So with this album, with the new album, we actually got a normal amount of money to reserve an awesome studio here in Lviv and we sent this mixes we sent to Swedish guy we already collaborate with him at the blind lead in the blind so we continue our work with him and he prepare for us 
I think fucking awesome mix. He did a lot of work and it was a good work. And the new stuff on this album, we add in a live orchestra. It's not a samples. It's really live orchestra from Lviv, from our main town. So we add in a live bagpipes and a lot of samples, industrial noise, some war sound samples. Something like this. <laughs> Okay, where fear and weapon meets brings 11 track of pure historic hardness follow up the band sophomore full length The Blind leading The Blind in 2018 and the debut Eschatology of War in 2015 both highly acclaimed among critics and create a sophisticated variety of brutal black and death and accent by dramatic and realistic audio soundscape and disquieting melody the spice with the approach of sludge and doom to support the new album the bands will touring extensively across mainland europe and uk with support from covenant now lift loss high risk and dual on select dates for the all quiet on the western front tour 2022 ditmar what can the fans expect and how are the excitement to be back on the road <laughs> i'm really actually we all really excited about it but let's do not forget about covid <laughs> he still and he live with us and i don't know which situation in the world will be in the next year so but i hope i really hope we can make this tour i'm really looking forward to this tour because two years we sit in just here on our asses and honestly i want to play i want to play <laughs> as much as possible so i'm looking forward uh, for this tour and i hope we will show as good as we can we will play the second one album material the blended in the blind we will play a new album where fear and weapons meet and i hope people will like it because we prepare actually a huge program with interesting stories i'm always saying that 1914 is not about music we're not playing just the music we about storytelling we're telling the stories so and i'm prepare interesting story for these geeks and i hope we will play it and covid fuck covid <laughs> <laughs> Okay, to end this great interview, Dietmar, I see that you also will be at the Mystic Festival in Poland this coming June 2022 and at this great festival, Party Song Open Air in Germany, August 2022. Mm -hmm. What other festival will the band be playing this coming year in support of this great new album? Yes, have you been to these two festivals already? No, we did not play it yet, but because it's rescheduled, on the next year but I'm really looking forward to playing there so you so I line up <laughs> Mastodont and uh, Judas Priest and and all this wall <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, great lineup yeah really fucking brilliant lineup and we booked a lot of brilliant festival like Summer Breeze Speed Festival in Netherlands Into the Grave Festival Alcatraz Festival even Brutal Assault in Czech Republic so I'm really looking forward to play this festival but I <laughs> keep my finger crossed if you're gonna be playing at Into the Grave I might catch you there I'll be there it after will be awesome. we will drink a beer <laughs> yeah, we will drink a beer yeah but tell me the Mystic Festival I see the lineup here I see wow Judas Priest 50 heavy metal years celebration mm -hmm. a merciful fate killer lineup with Catatonia Mayhem Saxon so mm -hmm. and Mbois Vader yeah <laughs> <laughs> you even can imagine how I fucking tired with this COVID and sitting here in Ukraine <laughs> without all those great festivals with such brilliant lineup. And not to forget Party Song, I see here this member, Carcass, Cannibal Corp, yeah, Party Song Festival, Pulses, Catatonia, yeah. Benediction, as fix wow yeah so you're gonna have a lot of fun man i mean as fan and as musician yes <laughs> totally yes but okay to close this interview dietmar tell us about those standing cover artwork and what merchandises is there available for those diehard fans of 1914 <laughs> actually Die Hard edition was sold out in one week <laughs> something like this even we 
as a band, didn't got any items of this Die Hard edition. <laughs> so you kidding? No, I'm just uh, wrote a letter to our manager and asking him, man, please, can you book for us a few pieces of this? No, man, sorry, it's sold out. <laughs> totally sold out. <laughs> but, but, I mean, there's merchandises of the new album already available? Yes, yeah, still available on the Napalm Records store. But if we talk about Die Hard edition, three vinyls with a poster with a patch. I saw the flyer there with a Die Hard edition. Yeah, so it's already sold out. And if we talk about artwork, so the main things about new album, it's not about death. It's about life and it's about hope. Even our stories in this album, because mostly our characters and our protagonist in our song still alive, went back home and became a hero. And They still alive. So it's the main reason between this new album and, for example, The Blind Leading the Blind, where everyone died. <laughs> so the artwork is about life too. You know, Death stands near the wounded soldier. He's covered with mud, he's covered with the blood, he lost some of his parts. He reached out to Death in agony and trying to, you know, he asking about Death, but Death standing near and said, No, sorry man, but you deserve to live. And Des do not reach out to this soldier because he was so brave and he deserved to live. But tell me, this cover artwork was done by the same artist that have done uh, for the blind yes. leading the blind? Well, the blind leading the blind and he prepared for us actually uh, well, when we re-released the first album Eschatology of War with the new art. He prepare for us the new art of eschatology of war about vinyl release. He prepared for us mostly our t-shirts and uh, in a few days we will post in our Facebook a new t-shirts with a new art. So yes, it's a one greatest guy artist which I know, Vladimir Chebakov. His nickname Smerdulak from Czech Republic. And I hope we will collaborate with Smerdulak, with Vladimir a long, a long time. Okay, very great. I mean, I can't wait to see this upcoming new cover artwork for T-shirt. <laughs> Believe me, it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, okay, to conclude this interview, Dietmar, I will hand you over the microphone of Madame Messiah Radio International for you to thank whomever you want to thank. So, first of all, cheers from Ukraine to everyone. <laughs> And uh, actually for DJ Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International and all your listeners. So thank you for having us and let's drink a beer somewhere in the Belgium. <laughs> yeah, sure, in, in, the Netherlands. in the Netherlands. Or in the Netherlands or in France or in Germany. Let's drink a beer. <laughs> Thank to Napalm Records and everyone who responsible for all this huge machine. That's all. <laughs> Once again, Didmir, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for doing this great interview. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. And, you know, I can't wait, as I said, to meet with you guys, to see you guys play live. I hope I do. Into the grief in the Netherlands is coming August. So, <laughs> looking forward to meet with you, to have some beers with you, and to enjoy you playing live. Thank you, man. Okay, like how we say, metal on. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, Metal Messiah Radio. So